Hi everyone! Today is going to be a simpler, casual video. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I picked up this um, stack of Kokuyo um, paper because it's highly recommended for fountain pen users and it's an affordable lined paper option that's made in Japan. So we're going to turn this stack of loose leaf sheets into a stab bound notebook. What I've got here is um, a pen and pencil, a scoring tool, you can also use a bone folder or something um, blunt and flat, a utility knife, a ruler, a sewing needle, some thread, scissors, and of course the cutting mat. And then in terms of the cover, I picked up these two uh, black textured cardstock from Joanne, I believe. Um, they are 12 by 12 and you can find them easily at many arts and crafts stores. They're usually stored in racks um, in the scrapbooking paper area. So I decided to go um, pretty minimal and you'll need two of these 12 by 12 sheets. So let's try this out. I haven't done it yet and hopefully it will work out the way that I am envisioning. The first thing I'm gonna do is grab some thin thread and tie the papers together through um, the holes here. So I'm gonna tie a double knot, which is also known as a reef knot. The challenge with stab binding is needing to hand punch the papers to make your own holes and I find that the most frustrating part, especially if the your stack of papers is quite thick and difficult to work through with an awl. So um, paper with this many holes eliminates that need so it, it's um, nice to be able to work with pre-punched paper. Now that our paper is secure, we are going to cut the covers to size. First, I'm gonna check for paper grain. Um, paper grain is the direction that the fibers are laid during manufacturing. And why we need to know that is because we're going to create a hinge on the front cover. And because the front cover will be opening and closing a lot along the hinge, we want the fibers to go along the spine so that um, the paper won't wear out as easily. So um, just bend the paper one direction and then the other direction. One direction should feel um, like it has the least resistance. So that's this way for me. Yeah, that's this way. So I'm just gonna uh, mark in the corner, maybe this bottom corner, that the direction of the paper grain runs up and down this way. What I'm going to do is just cut the paper to the same um, size as our stack of lined paper. So I'm just going to line it up at the right and bottom edges. And then I'm going to mark the left and top edge. Actually, what I'm going to do is cut both the front cover and back cover at the same time. 
So just making sure the papers are running in the same direction. a bit stuck. There we go. So put the covers um, on either side of the papers and just take a look to see if all the edges line up. So there's at the fore edge here, which is the outer edge, there's a slight overhang and I actually want it to be flush. So I'm going to trim that um, hairline essentially. Now we're going to create the spine that will uh, wrap around and cover these holes. So I want the spine wrap to um, cover the biggest hole and a little bit, which is a half inch. So we're gonna measure a half inch and then plus the thickness of the spine. Maybe do it this way. So that's three eighths, three eighths inch. So we're gonna bring back one sheet of the cardstock and mark half inch three eighths inch and then another half inch. And this has to go along the uh, grain as well. So we need the marks at the top and bottom so we can score folding lines along here. So I'm just lining up my ruler, matching up the points and scoring a line. And then we will fold along that line. It's really hard to do this without scoring, so it's important to create those score lines. All right, so here's our spine wrap. Let's try it. Just take a look at the, the fit. Feel that um, the spine is nice and snug against the pages. Something I'm not sure what to do about are the rounded corners here because if I leave the um, sharp corner here, it's definitely going to get damaged. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare has an abundance of high quality creative classes from finding your style to entrepreneurship. Their classes have been immensely helpful for when I feel bored or stuck and when I need some guidance on where to take my career as a small business owner. With so many classes to choose from, I find the best way to approach them is to dedicate an afternoon or a weekend to one class. Take your time to do all the exercises and you'll gain the most value. Skillshare teachers are great at making their classes accessible and fun. I really need to work plan these next few months, so I'm excited to take Amanda Rach Lee's class on creative planning and journaling this weekend. I'm personally very inspired by Amanda, and I'm looking forward to learning some tips from her. If you have goals to take your creativity or your career to the next level, check out Skillshare's extensive class library to support your intentions. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. 
All right, so I'm just trying something here. I cut this little piece and um, created these flaps that will essentially uh, um, perform as a corner protector here. First, mark the rounded corners on the spine wrap. Of course, if you have straight papers or corners that are not rounded, you don't have to do this. This is getting a little more complicated than I'd like, but let's see what happens. So I'm just gonna cut straight across and round this corner as well. Okay, so now it's molded to this corner. You could probably leave it as is. Um, I'm going to try to add this corner protector here. Okay, just gonna do that. So this is where I have to trim right there. I'm just going to use a glue stick. Just trying to add some pressure so that it sticks. That doesn't look too bad. It's not as uh, rounded as I'd like, but I think I'm satisfied with that for now. It's kind of hard to do this live while filming. So apologies if I'm not in frame or centered. How I cut that piece was I measured um, the tabs plus the width of the spine. So it was three eighths, three eighths, three eighths. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. Then I measured about um, a half inch from the bottom to mark those tabs. And then I'll score this to fold the tabs up. Okay, I'm gonna try to roll this so it will mold around the rounded corner. And I'm gonna mark where I need to trim It fits nicely. Okay, so before I put the cover together, I'm going to create a um, punching guide for the four holes I'm going to punch. This is just a piece of scrap paper on the bottom. I'm gonna take my pencil and mark the top and bottom edges. And then I'm going to mark four holes that are as um, equidistant as possible. The length of this is 10 and 1 8th. 
if we want four holes, they'd be about two inches apart. So let's do two from each edge first. So I'm just gonna mark inside the hole onto the paper at the bottom. Okay, so as you can see, I have marks for the top and bottom edges, and then I have these holes that are about the same distance apart. So this one will go through that hole, this one will go through this hole, this one lines up with that, and this one lines up with that. I'm double checking that the holes punched into the cover need to be a quarter inch from the spine edge so that they'll go through these holes. And then I'm just marking a quarter inch from the edge and line that up. So I'm going to glue my front and back covers uh, onto the spine. There's some waste paper that I use for gluing. I'm just gonna stick that in there. I'll deal with the rounded corners at the very end. I think it'll be um, easy to trim them when the book is done. Just rub that down so that it adheres better. So I just cut out these corners so that I can line them up easier. I'm gonna use some tape to tape this down. Okay, so I've got my all here. All right, so we're just gonna punch through these intersections all the way to the cutting mat. the holes. I'm just going to... yeah. Okay. So they are showing up on the other side. I'm going to just gently push through those. You want your holes to be just wide enough for your needle to go through. All right, so I couldn't decide between red and black. Sorry, red and blue. So let's see what I like better. Red. Or blue. Both look good, but I think I want blue. So I'm gonna measure thread. Um, oh no, I forgot about the how much thread we need for this. Let's just go with five times, just in case. One, two, three, four, five. You can use any sewing needle as long as your thread will fit through it. For uh, stab binding, I'm going to refer to these holes as sewing stations. So this is sewing station one, two, three, and four. So start in sewing station two from the bottom. And leave about a two, two and a half inch tail and wrap around the spine and go through sewing station two again, making sure the tail remains. Like that. So pull taut and then go into station three. And wrap around the spine 
and go into station three again. Now through station four, wrap around the spine. And you're gonna wrap around the bottom edge as well. This one's a little tricky. You have to make sure it lands evenly and squarely and pull taut. Feel free to check the tension as you go. Okay, back into station three. And up through station two. down through station one and wrap around the spine. As well as the top edge. Full taut. So the sewing's now done. And you're going to secure it by tying a knot. So I like to tie the knot as close to the hole as possible. And then do a second one. Let's, um, let's trim it about there so that we can tuck it in. Let's um, flatten that. With this binding, you can use any other thread as long as it's nice and strong. Let's um, do the finishing touches. So we want to create a um, hinge for the spine. So I'm gonna line up my ruler to the edge of the corner protector. And then I'm gonna score the cover. So basically, um, you'll want to score where the spine wrap and the front cover meets. If it's possible for you to just see the edge of the spine wrap um, right at the corners there. So that's gonna be the hinge for the front cover. Just carefully kind of fold that over. There you go. And then the last thing to do is to just trim the corners of the cardstock covers to match the rounded corners. To secure the top and bottom stitches since they're a little bit long. I like to just put dab some PVA glue on top and then secure it that way. The PVA glue will dry clear. All right, so here's the final book.
One thing to keep in mind about stab binding is that it won't lay totally flat. As you can see that um, the nature of the binding uh, always creates a gutter. Um, so it's always a challenge to find ways to bind single sheets, but I think this is um, the most simple and elegant way to do it, especially if these papers are um, pre-punched. I hope you enjoyed watching me try this project out and I hope it inspires you to try it out as well. Um, I'm excited to use this with my fountain pens. The paper feels um, super smooth, so I'm looking forward to seeing how the ink shows up. So I went out and bought some college ruled three hole punch paper and I'm going to show you how I would bind this as well. So I've got my, the other side of my punching guide and I'm going to mark the edges, the holes. So I have the top edge and then these lines that line up with the holes and the bottom edge. And then I need to measure the midway point from the holes, which is a uh, three eighths inch. One, two, three. So this one's gonna be a lot more bare bones. I'm not creating the spine wrap or corner protectors. I just have the front cover and the back cover. So I'm going to line these up. So I've punched through the intersections and um, through both covers. Since we didn't tie the pages together like the last book, I um, clipped the book on either side and we're going to start sewing. So I've got purple thread here. And similar to last time, these are, these will be referred to stations one, two, and three. So we're gonna start in sewing station two from the bottom. And leave a two inch tail, and then wrap around the spine and go through station two again. And then go to station three. Wrap around the spine. And then wrap around the bottom edge. And then go up through station two. Now into station one. Wrap around the spine. And wrap around the top edge. Okay. And then now you can flip it over and tie a knot. So let's take the clips off. 
So what I would probably do to secure these stitches is to just drop some PVA glue on top and let that dry. Um, this is definitely a lot more bare bones than this one, um, but in a pinch, you could totally do this to create a notebook with lined, the three hole punch lined paper. Oh, actually, let me create a score line here so that the front cover can open easily. I'm just eyeballing the width of this. Just to my preference. And then let's fold that up. So here's the final book. 